I gotta get used to some of these controls sometimes. I'm so accustomed to playing uh, Super Metroid. Like, I use L and R for both angular, um... Oh, damn it! I pressed the wrong button. And I wasted my super missiles. Fantastic! You know, I used to be one of those guys who would complain about, like, how Metroid... Like, they always make it up, up some excuse how to get rid of all of her powers so you have to collect them again, and then, like... You know what? That's they, not really an issue because that's the point of a game to feel more powerful as you progress and shit. You, you, it, it's just a way of just it, it's it's using the same formula because it's a formula in terms of gameplay. In terms of storytelling, yeah, people are going to question that a lot. I mean, I, I love that um, if you remember, like, I'm pretty sure you remember this because we both love Newgrounds, uh, the decline of video gaming. <laughs> um, oh, I love decline. I yeah. love decline. Ah, I see. So you still uh, mix select and you, uh... Oh, hello! Oh, oh my god! That was fucking close! Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got a new one... energy tank, so I'm like, ooh, come to pop- Oh, shit! It's a trap! <laughs> Do you, did you remember that one, uh, Decline video where, like, they made a, a Lara Croft parody where she, apparently she would, like, open a like a, a closet and her arms would feel stronger and shit. I think so. Yeah, she's like, my arms feel stronger now. My legs feel stronger now. My boobs feel bigger now. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I love how they covered this uh, Ridley uh, theme here. It actually, it feels more appropriate instead of just, like, doing a note for note. They they have, like, it feels more atmospheric. I've been, like, ca like quietly listening to the soundtrack of uh, Zero Mission. And some of the covers, they're okay. It doesn't leave as much of an impact. Uh, but the, uh, the one that goes, like, doo -doo 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 like, it's supposed to build up an intense, like, a horror feel sort of thing. And it's appropriate for mm -hmm. uh, facing Ridley. Okay. I'm probably just spewing shit on my ass, and this is probably flying over your head. I mean, a bit, but I, I think I understand the concept. Yeah. I, I do want to say for the record that even though I did a terrible job playing this game, uh, like, obviously, I'm still new with the game. Like, whenever it comes to a new game of some sort, you're bound to make a shit ton of mistakes. Um, but overall, this is a fantastic remake. I'm back, and yes, I agree, because holy crap, is it nice to be able to play, you know, a facsimile of original, original Metroid, and um, with updated mechanics. Map. Yeah, having no. Having a map. That was the issue with the first game, is that you get lost easily because a lot of uh, the shafts and a lot of the areas are copy and paste, to the point where you can't keep track of anything. Don't like a lot of people recommend you play this game instead of the first game because it's basically. I'm a, a little or mixed. Up, I'm a little mixed about that. Um, like yeah, it, it you're gonna have a hard time, but it's one of those things where I hate to say it, but you would have to look up a map uh, if you want to play the NES version because I I like I, I'm under that belief, not in belief, but the impression that whenever it comes to the point where you're um using a strategy guide is some people will make the assumption that you're cheating but if you're stuck at something and you're running out of patience sometimes you got to look that up that that's ridiculous like that's that's the yeah that's that's the same line of reasoning like dickheads who get mad that like oh why is this streamer playing on easy difficulty they shouldn't be playing the game if they got to play on easy like f off yeah like, exactly games, it's like you, you go play you Go ahead. You play games to have fun. Yeah. yeah. That's the point. I always had that insecure feel. Like, if push comes to shove, I might come back to playing the games that I didn't like playing before and just fucking use a strategy guide. Am I maxed out on... Oh, yeah, I'm already maxed out on um, missiles. No, and it looks like I'm maxed out on um, my super missiles as well. Okay. Anyways, you were saying? So as you were playing this, I decided... Uh, to load up this game myself. Oh. And, um, so, uh, but, uh, 
Because I'm one of the few people left in North America that still has a Wii U hooked up to their television. Oh, uh, um, dude, I, I have all kinds of retro game uh, Contra. Just, in fact, um, I'll, I'll save it until after you're done. Sorry for interrupting. Well, I still the thing, it, it's 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 more reasonable for people to have a retro console hooked up to their TV than a Wii U because it was the fucking Wii U. <laughs> I, I still have yet to, like, try out the Wii U. I mean, if there's any reason why I would want to play uh, or get the Wii U, I want to, like, catch up on the other installments of the Smash Brothers insta uh, games. Also, Mario Maker. If I can't, if I can't get a copy, if I get a copy of a, a port of Wind Waker on the Switch, I'll just dust out my, my Wii U out of storage and just get it for that. Uh, that would yeah, probably be a reason. Off. I mean, literally dust off. <laughs> that thing is covered in dust. <laughs> yeah, oh, like... Hi, Jesse. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, no, earlier... Hey, Turkey. But earlier, Turkey, I was talking about uh, the soundtrack for uh, Zero Mission. I'm a little mm. mixed on it. Like, some of which, they, like, they're just, like, they feel a little recomposed. Um, like, for instance, uh, cr uh, yeah, Crate's Lair... That's easily my favorite track in the first Metroid game because it feels so atmospheric. The remake, it feels orchestrated, but it doesn't have that... It doesn't have the same atmosphere. Whereas uh, Ridley's Lair, the, uh, the one that goes like... Doo -doo 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 it actually has a more horror sort of feel to it. And that actually... That does a lot of justice as far as covering it goes. Yeah, um... There's a video series I discovered recently where a guy was talking about why, like, each entry in the series is good at, like, at creating horror. Um, like, the original NES game, he even talks about how, like, the NES game used black backgrounds because well, it was so a way... Well, you, so you can see your character. Yes. Um, and hardware restrictions. Yeah. yeah, but it also aided in the feeling of uh, it, it kind of aided in the feeling of like isolation and this play and this unwelcoming place of like this is not a place to feel safe in. Uh, yeah, no, I getcha. That's yeah, no, like. Because that that's funny? that's the impression that I had. Yeah. Okay, that's somewhat of the impression that I had when it came to Super Metroid. I played Super Metroid first before the first Metroid. Because I played uh -huh. a little bit of the first Metroid. I was like, dude, where the fuck am I? And I just shut it off. Yeah, I... <laughs> um, I go ahead. I, le I legit started... I, I booted up original Metroid last week. I was like, oh, I'm going to start playing this. See how long it takes me to get lost. It did not take me long. With those, just those big vertical uh, sections of like, okay, which door did I go in? Did I go in this one yet? Yeah, because okay, it's so me... copy and paste. The same thing with Crate's Lair. Same fucking uh -huh. shit. It's ridiculous. <laughs> ha! Yeah. Fuck you. Go, go, in, go in the same door like two or three times because you can't remember if you got in there yet or not. Ow, fucker. <laughs> So, how have you all been? I've uh, been good. Had a bit of a rocky start with the, um, and I had more drop frames. Great. Oh no. Uh, magical start. Thank you for hosting. Oh crap. I, I just got back home from having a little vacation with my mom and my daughter. Oh, nice. Aw. Oh yep, shit. We went to, we went to the Great Wolf Lodge. That sounds cool. Um, oh, it was fun. So there are people who who don't know who the heck I am, which, fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am a Charky. Uh, you're Brony with a black shirt. That's what I call myself. Nobody calls me that. Um, <laughs> and, he's, also, uh, he's also Eliora's husband. Yes. I am I am the lucky fellow who, who married Eliora. And uh, when, cool. as of... Last Wednesday, we celebrated our two-year wedding anniversary. Yay! Now, granted, because it was on Wednesday, it wasn't like we we went out or anything. But I took today off of work, 
and um, uh, we so we, a couple of most notable things one we got breakfast um, it was from McDonald's but hey uh, McGriddles are good um, <laughs> that's that's about the only thing we'll you'll hear us defend as far as McDonald's menu goes because holy crap you should not be eating it <laughs> but um, uh, And, uh, but more notable is, you know, because we kind of goofed around a bit, but, uh, uh, we, we did some axe throwing today. You don't belong in the kitchen. It's not the fifties. Honey, do you really think of, do you really think I'm that sexist? That's what you think of me. You think I belong in the kitchen to make you din din. That's what you think. Your face is like almost piercing my neck. Oh, well, also, hi, Key. Facial hair is piercing my pores. I think so. I guess we're at an impasse. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> well, alrighty. Anyways, um. No, but back with Super Metroid, that's, that's one of those things where just on the level of emotions, like, the game begins when you're on a, a, a space colony. And you have no idea what happened, and then you run into Ridley, and then you had to evacuate, and then you're on this planet, and just by the um, just by the ambience, you have just. Uh, I'm trying to find the right words while I'm playing the game at the same time. It can be hard. Yeah, it can be. No, like you have this sense of isolation, like it's all like deserted and everything, like a sense of loneliness. Oh yeah. Also, I noticed Zuckerman asked how Nicole's doing. She is doing fine. I think I'm slowly turning her into oh, a furry. Oh, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Why would I... you say that? What? You said your, your daughter is slowly turning into a furry? Yeah. Oh, because, boy. Okay. Okay, here's the reason why. In the when we were at the Great Wolf Lodge, they had some merch that was like wolf themed items, like a wolf tail, wolf ears, um, wolf slippers, like their little wolf paws that are house shoes. Uh -huh. And she wanted to get the whole deal. So I was like, okay, we, we could do that. Because she likes pretending that she's a werewolf. Then, well, I, okay, I don't know if that's, like, considered furry material. The no, whole idea but, of being turned into a werewolf is, a, like, it's an ancient trope. It's also, it can be seen as a furry trope to some, to some people in the furry community. But it's not a bad thing. But, um, no, like... She, uh, but then she, one day, earlier today, actually, she then said, I'm a furry! And I'm like, oh my god, what am I doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh well, my god, this is... No I'm help, getting, no I'm getting rocket doodle there. vibes there. <laughs> oh, right, because it, that kid says that. Yeah, he discovered that he's a cat. He looks oh, at his hands and is like, Jeepers, I'm yeah. a furry! I'm like, what the fuck? Not gonna lie, that was the first thing that popped in my head when she said that she said that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is... <laughs> so, no, oh. jo no joke... Um, Ellie and I were, you know, just sitting oh. watching YouTube and stuff, and at one point she was just like, and this was like earlier in the week, she's like, for some reason I just have Rockadoodle in my head, and I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> not something that's randomly coming to my head, but sure, what, like, uh, just... I mean, it's a good movie. To, to For some people, it's a good movie. I remember growing up watching it, so it's a childhood favorite of mine. That movie was I mean, weird as, as hell. As far as, like, Don Bluth's weaker films, I'd say I probably liked Penguin, Pebble and the Penguin more. I liked it, too. Um, Understandable. Yeah, like, the weird thing that I found is that... Okay, Rotten Tomatoes, you can only take with a pinch of salt. 
Pebble and the Penguin has a 0%. I'm like, wait, what?